Hey guys, it's The Attack here. I want to talk about something nostalgic for me growing up. Uh, my grandpa, he really liked Doctor Who and it became a big part of my life. Uh, I really liked the show. It was sci-fi. It was time traveling. Aliens and monsters. It was, it was everything that a little boy growing up was like, this is awesome. So I just wanted to show you uh, my take on the show, you know, it started in the 60s, it's a British show, but time traveling doctor who steals a time and space traveling device known as a TARDIS, stands for time and relative dimension in space. Uh, in the 60s with the first doctor we get to see his granddaughter Susan, uh, you don't get to see her until the 80s with the doctor's movies, but she never really comes a part of the series again. And he starts picking up other people, humans, throughout the way, who he calls companions, both men and women, mostly women most of the time. And the doctor can die and regenerate his face, his clothes, his gender, as we saw in the new one. But I just wanted to show you, uh, first of all, some of the DVDs I've collected over the years. I don't have the old doctors on DVD, except for this one that I picked up. I need to start getting them all, but this is a really good one. This is the fourth doctor. It's Tom Baker. Some people would say the best doctor. And if you notice the companion here, Sarah Jane Smith. She shows up throughout the series quite a bit, actually. Um, it's, it's pretty cool. But for me, you know, growing up with my grandpa, I watched the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh movie, so, you know, Doctor, until, you know, they didn't watch no more. And then in 2005, we got the ninth Doctor, and Chris Frexton nailed it, like, he was, he was a great Doctor. I loved him. We only did one season, and he called it quits. And then, arguably, next Tom Baker, known as the best doctor of the whole Doctor Who series, is uh, David Tennant. You might know him from Doctor Who. He's also been in Broadchurch, Jessica Jones. He's the voice of Scrooge McDuck. He's done so many things. He's a very versatile actor. He's Scottish. Represent. He's amazing. Uh, years ago, when these all came out on DVD, I made an effort to go out and buy them all and make sure they had the cardboard shiny sleeve. I make sure I had to get them all. So they call them series instead of seasons most of the time in Great Britain. They're slowly summing around to using terminology here, but so that's one. And as you can see, like I used to get this one has a free bad wolf wristband. You know, if you watch the series, you know what bad wolf is. And there was one of my first crushes back in the day too. There was Tyler. I used to always like her, especially with the Doctor. These two were amazing. I think they're probably my favorite companion duos. You know, really good storylines. Some of the craziest stories I've ever seen were done on that Doctor's run. And then, of course, if you've seen New Amsterdam, you'll recognize this girl. She played Martha Jones, the Tenth Doctor's companion. Freeman Ajima, I believe is how you say her name. I don't want to mispronounce it. I just, that's why I think it's how you say it. So then I started finding I couldn't get them all with the sparkly cases, but I could still get the same series collection. So like, here's the Weeping Angel, again, Martha Jones, you know, Captain Jack Hartness, there's the Master, you know, so many different things that they do. If you watch The Office, you'll recognize Catherine Tate. She's in this. It's, it's, it's too funny. Like, oh, I, these two are ridiculous together. Again, some pretty good adventures. Kylie Minogue, The Titanic, I believe, that season two. Then I started finding the seasons again with uh, this shiny case, which was great. This one came with four fridge magnets. I still have them on my fridge to this day. And then 
David Tennant disappears and the eleventh doctor came and I was hesitant towards him. I didn't really like him to be honest. I was such a big David Tennant fan. But then I came around to Matt Smith and Amelia Pond, you know, and all that. And Murray. And then I started getting the Christmas specials. You know, there were some pretty good ones that came out. But then it all came full circle for me. This is probably my all-time favorite Doctor Who experience. It's the Doctor Who movie. They have the Doctor 50th Anniversary Special. We get to see 10 and 11 work together with the war Doctor Who, I guess, between 8 and 9. He's played by John Hurt. It's really good. And Matt Smith and David Tennant deliver. The fourth Doctor shows up as a curator. You have Billy Piper come back as the Rose Tyler figure. And then, of course, Matt Smith is still with, uh, we'll call her, Souffle Girl. And it's a really good movie. At one point, all the doctors show up to help out. It was really well done. The storyline was great. The mixing of the doctors, some of the favorite ones, was just fantastic. Uh, you know, Clara was a great sidekick and I really liked her in this Christmas special. Some of the Christmas specials are garbage or you know holiday special whatever they want to call them now but some of them are really good. Uh, you know the, the Doctor Who movie it was interesting because then this one came out which was the time of the Doctor and this one was really weird. Matt Smith went on a really long journey which was just odd. And you know, then again, Matt Smith's doctor incarnation dies, and we get Peter Capaldi. And I bought the Deep Breath episode, it just came in its own packaging. You can see the writing changing over the years and whatnot. And I really got into this doctor. I decided to go all out and make sure I got it. And the nice thing is that they didn't, they had the sparkly case built into these now. It was really nice box sets that I was really pleased with. You know, the 8th series is just a really good one. I like it a lot. Then we have the, the Last Christmas, which is really good with Santa Claus. A lot of people mix reviews on it, but, you know, Peter Capaldi really brought it home. And then, of course, we have The Husbands of River Song, which is really good. Really, really good storyline for River. I always liked her since the library with David Tennant. So it's 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 really good. And then you know I have series nine, part one. Just plain to the point with all of these. Here's part two. But all of these have this similar circular backgrounds. I I really recommend the show if you haven't seen it. It's really fun, it's interesting, it's you know, the whole family can enjoy it. Recently the doctor reincarnated as a uh, new female doctor played by Jodie Whittaker and she does a really good job and she comes after Peter Capaldi passes and she's a very odd character a mixture I feel of the last three doctors before her so I wanted to show you something really quick here uh, I was very fortunate over the years to come across some copies of Doctor Who comics and this one is the fifth doctor uh, it's really good I uh, picked it up for a steal, and it's an actual Marvel comic. They have tons of these, if you don't know. If you're into comics, Doctor Who comics are phenomenal stories as well. And then, a few years ago, I picked up the continuing story of the 10th Doctor, and the 11th, it was a doubles issue, so it was kind of cool. The show came out in the 60s, ended in 99, came back in 2005, and has been running strong ever since, has diehard fans like me and others of you who've enjoyed the show. Do you have any shows from your past that was like a sci-fi thing, maybe Star Trek, uh, maybe, you know, it could be a whole bunch of different cartoons, there's so many different random things, like, is there any sci-fi series time traveling show you like? I know a lot of people compare the Doctor Who TARDIS a police phone call box to Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure with the phone booth, like, you know, or Back to the Future. It's, uh, to me, it's not my favorite time-traveling sci-fi adventure out there. I like it better than Star Wars. I like it better than Star Trek. You know, I love all those things, but I find this franchise is much 
much more saturated with crazy obscure things that most people wouldn't want to do. And you know, really, really quirky things the doctor does just makes you laugh, make you make you feel like you want to go on an adventure with him. So thank you for watching. Uh, let us know in the comments what's your favorite sci-fi series, trilogy, movie, TV show, whatever you want to call it, time traveling show, something like that that you like. And give us a like and subscribe. And thank you so much for all of you for taking the time to watch these videos. Uh, I'm going to be having some more videos coming soon. And remember, no matter what you do, there's nostalgia everywhere.